Hello and welcome to this new video from Flutterflow Academy. Today we will talk about the app settings. This video is structured into six parts going through each different part of the app settings. You can find your app settings on the left hand navigation bar under the settings icon just below actions, just below the widget tree, just below the UI builder. So let's get started. So right at the top of the app settings, you can change the project name. So when you started the project inside of Flutterflow, you gave it a name. This project has the name app settings, but I could change it to hello, or I could change it to welcome. And then you see immediately that my package name changes as well. So what is the package name? The package name is basically just the name of the app on my back end. It really does not matter that much. And if you have a premium plan from Flutterflow, you can also disable the splash and watermark from Flutterflow. The next part are the app assets. What are the app assets? The app assets are the icons and the images that users see when they download your app and when they open your app. The first is the app launcher icon. That is the icon that is on the user's home screen. We have a link provided to you in the comments where you can see how you can configure your app icon. The next is the initial splash image. The initial splash image is when the user first opens your app. We have a link for that in the comments as well. The next thing you can define is the navigation transition. What is the navigation transition? When a user switches from one screen inside of your app to another, normally iOS or Android have default transitions. Normally the users don't even recognize those transitions because they are super smooth and fast. But if you, as a designer maybe, have a special transition in mind, you can define it here as a default transition for the whole of your app. For that, you just have to click this little button, override default transition, and then you can select the default transition type that you want to have. Maybe a fade in, a slide up, a slide down, slide left, slide right, or a scale. And then you also can select the transition duration. But we can just recommend here to keep the transition duration really low. So make it not longer than 300 milliseconds. Because if it's too long, it really stops the user's flow of using the app. We will deactivate this because normally you would just keep the default transition. The next thing you can define is the navigation bar. What is the navigation bar? If I click on show navigation bar, we can already see it. It is the bar at the bottom of the app. So how does the nav bar look inside of the app? For that, I'll just click preview. A new tab opens and I can see if I sign in that here is an F bar. Let's switch back to the app settings. Now inside of these settings, I can make some adjustments to my app bar. I can show the labels just of the selected icon or I can show all labels also of the unselected icons. We will dive deeper into how you edit these icons in the nav bar in a later video. Stay tuned for that. But you can also, inside of the settings, define the colors of the icons and the colors of the nav bar. For that, you get these advanced options color window for the nav bar color. So I can change it to blue. You select a color and you see, now my nav bar is blue. And I can also switch the icon colors, again with this advanced window. The next thing, and this is really important, is project colors. So what are project colors? Project colors are global, so spread across your whole app, used colors. They are always set by default and they make your life so much easier as a designer. Because if you define your project colors correctly up front, you can just use them across all of the designs. What do I mean by that? Let's switch the primary project color from red to maybe a green. Let's click use selected color. Now we're going to take a look into the UI builder and see what project colors actually mean. For that, I clicked on this container here. And for the container, I can define a fill color. If I click on this advanced colors option window, I can already see my theme colors or project colors are ready to go right here. So if I now want to change the color to my project color, to my primary project color, I can just click on it and have my primary project color ready. Obviously, this does not really fit into the look here, but you see, it makes it so much easier because I don't have to type in the exact hex code of my project color every time. I can just select it with two clicks. 
let's jump back to the app settings. And as mentioned before, you can define not just a primary color, but also a secondary, tertiary, and you can also add colors. So you can define basically as many colors as you want. Normally, you will not really have more than three or four colors for your project, but if you have like 20, Flutterflow lets you do that. Now, let's go to the last part of the video, the typography. So what is the typography? It kind of works like the project colors. You can define seven typographies, seven fonts across all parts of the app. You can define three titles, three subtitles and two body texts. That makes it really easy while designing your app because you can just select from predefined fonts. You don't have to do the manual work on every screen. And another great thing, if you want to change maybe all the title twos across your whole app, you can just change all the title twos. So while using all these styles inside your app, you should choose carefully on which part of the app you are going to use which style. So where you use style one, style two, style three, and so on and so forth. What are all options I have for my fonts? I can define the font weight. So if it's bold, extra bold, medium, normal, light, or extra thin, extra light maybe. Then I can define a font size. The font size works normally like you know it from Microsoft Word maybe. Then I can define a font style. A font style means if it's italic or not. Then I can define a color. For that, I get this advanced color window. And we see again, we can use our theme colors. And then I can select the font family. The font family is what you normally know as a font. For that, I can select all Google fonts. So Roboto works perfectly fine. Thank you for watching this video about the Flutterflow app settings.